Well, well, well. We meet again, do you mean, uh, <clears throat> Bloodborne? Ah, what a pain in the invader! Dark Souls! There we go. Dark Souls 3, the final in the Dark Souls series, has arrived. From Software has captivated me for years with their many entries into the gaming world. Each game improving upon the last, and this one lives up to the brutal, addicting, and immersive experience. This is Guts, who you may be familiar with from the series Berserk, and referenced more than one time in the Soul series. Why am I showing you this? Because the character creator is badass! That's why! You're gonna die a lot! <laughs> You are the Ashen One, and you're tasked with destroying the Lords of Cinder, who across time have ignited the first flame. Gwen, Lord of Cinder, may sound a little familiar. Does he ring any bells? The game, like the others, is mostly open world. You can explore how you like. The landscape is very open once you complete the tutorial section, with different routes all over the map. So how you get to the conclusion of this story is in your hands. You're gonna die a lot. If you've played any of the Souls games before, including Bloodborne, you know exactly where you're getting into. The Souls games are notorious for being a little slower character movement wise based on the heavy piece of equipment you wear, which is a little more medieval themed. You don't have to be a tank, however, you can be a lighter and agile fighter using daggers, or a magic user using talismans, jeez, you can be a man in his underwear, and a whip if that's what you really want to use. There is a new weapon skill system implemented, which when the use of L2 when two-handing a weapon will allow you to use its skill. They range from attack, to buffs, to defensive stances, to some I'm sure I've even yet to discover. Currently I have a shield that gets rid of my ability to parry, but I can go right into a weapon skill without two-handing a weapon. Very handy. On the bottom right corner you'll notice your experience or your currency count or your souls as many would call them. Those are used to purchase items, equipment, or level up your character. But if you're new to this series, listen to my words very carefully. If you die to an enemy, you will lose those souls. You have one chance to go back to that enemy. Collect your fallen souls, but if you die again, those souls are gone forever. Don't rush. When you rush in this game, you will die. On the bottom right corner, you'll notice your experience or your currency count or your souls, as many would call them. Those are used to purchase items, equipment, or level up your character. But if you're new to this series, listen to my words very carefully. If you die to an enemy, you will lose those souls. You have one chance to go back to that enemy. Collect your fallen souls, but if you die again, those souls are gone forever. Don't rush. When you rush in this game, you will die. Trust me. The magic meter has returned once again in this game, and with it, a new mechanic. The Estus Flask, which has known for restoring your health, now has an opposing flask, the Ashen Flask. It will restore your MP. You can divide up your flask uses however you like, which is pretty handy, because I never use magic, so I strictly use HP restoring flasks. You're gonna die a lot. Bloodborne was a great game, there's no denying that, but Demon Souls was the original Souls game that captivated me with their medieval appearance. So Dark Souls 3 is a real treat. The transition to the PS4 from Dark Souls 2 on the PS3, the difference is clear. The gameplay is smooth and very crisp. Even the scenery in the far distance is a sight to behold. I'm not just praising the sun, I'm praising the developers and whoever else involved with making this game look great. The theme is very well set for the final part of the series. Dying over and over again is not bad when you discover something beautiful and new with every death. You're going to die a lot. When I think about the experience and the immersion I feel with Dark Souls, I'm reminded of me standing by a bridge, hearing the flapping of what I was worried was a dragon in the distance. Quite a rush knowing a dragon could be flying towards me with the idea of roasting me up for lunch and I don't have an option of running away fast enough. You understand my relief when I turn around and happen to notice it's just a flag blowing in the wind, and I'm not even kidding, it was only a flag. But if that type of thing can create such a stir in my body, that is an amazing feat. The enemy's moans and groans are fantastic, but the immersion created from sound alone is something worth applauding. 
you're going to die a lot. From Software is finishing off their Soul series with an amazing farewell. I've clocked a little over 10 hours into the game, and every time I have to painfully pull myself away, I cry a little. It's a truly fantastic and memorable game. The bosses, they've all been memorable and equally terrifying in their own right. Changing the game to allow easily moving between covenants with items is more than a welcome addition for those who just want to sleep around, I mean, play the field and see which covenant they enjoy most. You might have heard me say, you're going to die a lot. I put a lot into that because you are going to die, a lot, but don't let it deter you. The feeling you get from finally accomplishing something so tough is truly something amazing. Dark Souls 3 is an absolute must buy. It has dragons, magic, pilgrims, swords, death, great music, secrets, and most of all, replay value. You can be whatever kind of adventure you want to be, make this story yours. I'm Zero to Hero 77 and I've died a lot. I plan on dying more and more and I ain't even mad. Let's die together. I can't recommend it enough. See you on the sunny side, sun bros. Praise the sun.